after you open up the transmission, you can see the valve body sticking out the bottom. Now to get to the forks, we're gonna take the valve body out. This is the orientation it comes out. You can see the pistons line up with each individual fork. Now you, each of these forks controls uh, two separate gears, just like a normal manual transmission. This top one, that's sixth gear. This one below it is fourth and second. This one is first and reverse. And then this one down here, which is not aluminum, this goes into the back housing and that controls third and fifth. Okay, now that we have the valve body out and we've talked about the forks, we can uh, explore the fluid path through the transmission. Now you can see here, um, the filter, the sump filter hooks into here, and this is where the, the fluid begins its journey. The pumps in here with the valve body, or the clutch valve body, which is in the front case. We're gonna talk about the main valve body today. So after the pump has made pressure, it sends it back through these three ports that in turn go into the valve body. The larger port is the main line pressure line, and this helps to control the entire valve body, this one and the clutch valve body. These two smaller ports are, are known as the access uh, pressures or clutch pressures, uh, and they go to these two solenoids right here and here, and the two clutch solenoids in the clutch valve body, uh, and they help to control shifting and uh, clutch release and clutch pressure. Okay, now when we look at the valve body, we see these pistons that can move and we correspond them to the, the forks uh, before. Now, each of these pistons controls two gears, just like the forks, except six gear because there's only six, gear, uh, six gears and a reverse. Um, now, you see these big black boxes. Uh, there's one on top of here, there's one tucked back here, 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 and here. Now these help to track the position of these so the computer knows where the, the, the piston is in relation to the fork uh, and where the fork is in the gear. So you know if you're actually engaged in a gear or you're in neutral or you're engaged in the other gear. Uh, and the way it does this, these track the movement of the magnets inside. And there's a magnet in whichever corresponding end the sensor is. So you can see this one has magnets on both ends. And that tells us that it, it's the first reverse piston because first and reverse uh, has a safety switch where you can't mistake first and reverse very easily because it has one sensor here and one sensor here. Therefore, it needs two magnets. All the other ones have only one magnet and one sensor per piston. Now, if we take off this black plastic, um, this has all the leads for all the solenoids. And we, we can look at all the solenoids now. And you can, you can see there's four solenoids in a row. And then this solenoid up here, um, they have different operations. Now each of these four solenoids dictate the fluid path um, behind the pistons to tell each piston to either move uh, right or left. And since there's only four and we have eight different chambers, that's the job of this solenoid. This solenoid changes the job of these four so that we can use four solenoids to move eight uh, different chambers since each piston has two chambers. So think of it as these four solenoids have, are in charge of these four chambers. And then in order to be in charge of these four chambers, this solenoid switches. And now these four have a different job and they control these four. Now when the pressure comes in through the line, it first meets a sensor, the pressure sensor, and this is the, the one you see on the dash, you can track in the car, and we'll look at that later. And now after that, the fluid is distributed to all five of these solenoids, and it hits this one first, uh, so it can decide which four of these do what. And after that, there's some springs and uh, retainers inside to, to dictate pressure to these two. And these two, the access solenoids, are in charge of both clutch A and clutch B and access A and access B respectively. And they dictate the shifts. So once these 
uh, are set up the correct way to move a piston, these actually allow the fluid to move the piston. So these don't actually help move the piston at all, they just direct the fluid where it should go and these two pulse the fluid and, and block off the path so that the fluid backs up and then is forced to enter one of these chambers and actually shift gears. And these solenoids also uh, dictate clutch pressure. Um, the pressure from the line goes to these solenoids first and then to clutch A and B. So a low clutch pressure could also be one of these solenoids because these solenoids dictate the pressure going to clutch A and clutch B. One of the things Nissan had to start doing with their transmissions um, was adding these TSB clips. I'm sure you've heard of them. They're, they're a really popular thing to do on an older transmission and they, they come on the newer ones. Uh, Nissan made these a little bit too narrow. So you can see right here there's a bunch of wear and what happens is these pistons, they move back and forth but they also can rotate and they start rotating on the fork and you wouldn't think this would be an issue, but remember these magnets we talked about? If they're twisted, they no longer are right next to the sensor, so they can't read correctly. And the ECU has, or sorry, the TCU has no idea where this piston is. Uh, it doesn't know if it's in a gear, in neutral, in the other gear, and that's when you, you start having bad things happen. So Nissan came out with this, and it's just a simple snap on like that and then that adds just enough clearance to where uh, this can't rotate in the fork uh, and then all those problems are fixed. And so we are currently in park. Uh, we're going to go ahead and shift into reverse gear and when I shift into reverse you're going to see these two voltages change. Uh, that's because we are moving uh, the 1R uh, piston which is moving uh, the first reverse shift fork and the first reverse uh, shifting sleeve. Now the sleeve is going to engage reverse gear so we're going to see one sensor show a voltage that's lower as the piston is moving away from it and the other sensor show a voltage that's higher because that sensor is actually um, getting closer to the magnet on the piston as the piston moves over. So let's, let's go into reverse gear you can see we're engaged in reverse because this position sensor shows, uh, well, 1.4 volts, volts was close enough, and position sensor number two shows four volts. So basically the piston where these two sensors are reading from has moved, so the magnet has gotten closer to this sensor and further away from this sensor. So that's reverse gear. If we go back into neutral, we can see we're back at two and a half volts again and everything's in the neutral position. Now we move over to first gear. In first gear we can see a lot has moved, but this has moved in another direction. Remember when we were in reverse gear, this one went to a lower voltage. It's higher now because before when we went into reverse gear, the piston moved away from the sensor to engage reverse. But to engage first gear, we got to go the opposite direction. So we went to neutral, which was halfway in between, and now we're in first gear, which brings the magnet on the piston closest to the sensor. So this sensor reads a, a voltage of close to 4 volts, which means it's fully engaged. And this sensor reads 1.3 volts, which means that it's fully, uh, the piston has moved away uh, from um, that, uh, that sensor. And another thing we can see here too is second gear has been pre-selected. So remember in neutral, everything was at 2.5 volts. So when we go into drive, we're engaging first gear but it's pre-selecting second gear at the same time. So, you know, in DCT true form here, we have, you know, two gears essentially engaged at the same time. So first gear is now engaged. We're gonna accelerate in first gear. As we accelerate, you see things are gonna move up and down a little bit because things are moving around in the transmission, but it still has second gear engaged. Now when we're in normal mode, so this switch here on the side, if we're in the neutral position, not R, but normal, if we're in that position, 
then the gear that is engaged in the transmission, the TCM is going to pre-select the next highest gear. So right now we're in first gear, second gear is also pre-selected. We engage second gear, you can see the 1R position sensors are now back in a neutral position. Second gear is still engaged, but now pre-selected third gear. Third gear, we're now down to 1.3 volts. So if we accelerate a little bit more, ABS is clicking on. We accelerate a little bit more and now shift into third gear. You can see third gear is still selected, but now pre-selected fourth gear. Now remember, we have a piston here that does two gears, so we're, it can select both second and fourth gear. So before, we were, when we were in second gear, this showed a low voltage because the piston was engaged for second gear all the way into one position. And now that we're in fourth gear, the piston has moved all the way over into the other direction. So now the magnet is actually closer to the sensor where before it was, it was further away. So let's downshift from third gear back into second again. So now that we're in second, you can see the voltage is low again because we have second gear engaged. So the magnet and piston is actually furthest away from the sensor. We engage third, and now it went from second to fourth. So the way this works is, so when we're in second gear, it's actually using second gear right now. And we can see the voltage has dropped. We engage third gear. Third gear is now engaged, which, which nothing has changed on that end, but this end, fourth gear is pre-selected. So you can see how the voltage has changed there. Second gear, third gear stays the same, fourth gear changes. Mm -hmm.